Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. So today, I wanted to discuss a few things about the Silicone Dust HD Home Run Flex 4K Digital Tuner. If you haven't seen one of these before, they're a device that has a coax connector on the one side that supports connecting your um, over-the-air antenna. Then they have a USB that optionally uses their proprietary DVR that's an extra cost service. And then we have the um, Ethernet connector here and finally power. And so the idea of using a um, HD Home Run Flex 4K tuner is you have the ability to watch over-the-air broadcast. And not only that, you have the ability to um, watch them on other devices, for example, laptops, desktops, phones, and tablets. So today specifically, I wanted to discuss HD Home Run's digital rights management. And on this particular tuner, they also receive the new ATSC3 broadcast. And I want to discuss the AC4 codec support. So in 2020, Silicon Dust released the Flex 4K tuner, which was its first next-gen 4K TV tuner device. And the HD Home Run Flex 4K digital tuner uh, is a network-based tuner, and it supports over-the-air ATSC3 broadcasts. The HD Home Run Flex 4K has two ATSC1 tuners, which are your standard HD tuners, and it has two ATSC3 tuners, which of course are your next gen TV tuners or the tuners capable of receiving 4K broadcasts when they're available. So the ATSC3 tuners receive both the HD signals and also the HEVC broadcast or the really high definition broadcast. So HD Home Run, the best part about it is that it's a digital network tuner. If you have multiple TVs in your house, uh, you don't have to run uh, coax cables to them. You can allow those devices to uh, receive over the air broadcast because it's based on your network. So ATSC3 Next Gen Video is encoded with the H.265 HEVC codec. And that particular video codec is a great codec for giving you fantastic compression. And in fact, I've done some videos on the channel before where I've talked about H.265 in regards to um, your power over Ethernet uh, cameras and where those cameras uh, also use the um, H.265 compression. And unfortunately, that creates a couple of problems because it's not readily supported by most, most devices yet, even though it's been out for a while. So ATSC3 Next Gen Audio is encoded with the Dolby AC4 codec, which is also a fantastic compression codec but it is very proprietary and it's patented by Dolby. So some ATSC3 broadcasts are also encrypted with digital rights management. And here's a picture in my broadcast area, which is in Houston, Texas, and it's showing you all of the HEVC channels I receive. And you'll notice that we've got two of them in particular uh, KHOU at 111.1, .1, which is the local CBS affiliate, and they have decided to DRM encrypt their broadcast. And then this uh, channel 147 has decided to also DRM encrypt their broadcast. So the channels that are not DRM encrypted, I can receive and I can view over the HD home run but the ones that are DRM encrypted, I do not yet have a way to view. So, um, ATSC3 
uses Dolby AC4. And I mentioned that earlier. So FFmpeg is the leading open source multimedia framework with codecs that handle all the major audio and video formats. And if you've used FFmpeg, either you're aware you've used it or you haven't been aware because it's been running in the background, it does a great job of handling the um, codecs to both encode and decode audio and video format. So FFmpeg does not support the Dolby AC4 codec for sound because it is proprietary. And in the past, um, FFmpeg has not supported other codecs. And eventually, either of those codecs are opened up to where they become open source, or what ends up happening is that the codec is reverse engineered. So Dolby is hesitant to license their patented technology to open source authors because they would, of course, lose a lot of revenue. And for that reason, products like Plex and Jellyfin can access HD Home Run ATSC3 HEVC broadcast, but they do so without receiving any sound. The HD Home Run Android app that the Silicone Dust folks, the makers of HD Home Run, have created can play those ATSC3 broadcasts and they can play it with sound, but that's because they link back to their server at Silicon Dust and they handle decoding AC4 sound and re-encoding it as AC3. And I have a video that I did, I guess about eight or nine months ago, and it's entitled HD Home Run 4K Plex and Jellyfin where I show how to create a local server on your network to convert your AC4 encoded sound to AC3 encoded sound so that you can play the sound from those um, ATSC3 broadcasts. So can Silicon Dust fix this particular problem? And the answer in short is no, they could not. So HD Home Run tuners simply receive the over-the-air signal and they send it over your network to applications that you may have based on your network. So solutions for digital rights management, encrypted signals, or proprietary codec issues have to be solved by target applications. So that's not something that Silicon Dust is going to be able to do. So even TV manufacturers like LG in 2024 have decided to drop ATSC3 tuners in their 2024 sets because they had to pay excessive royalties to integrate the codecs into their TVs. So there's a company by the name of Constellation Designs and they collect the royalty fee on each ATSC3 tuner which is being increased from $3 to just under $7 a piece. Now that doesn't sound like a lot but it adds up and affects the profitability of a company. So Obviously, I just mentioned that this affects the bottom line profits, and I think it's likely that Samsung and Sony will also follow LG since streaming and not over the air is becoming the more prominent method in order to receive broadcasts. So will Plex be able to fit the, fix this particular problem? And you know, uh, Plex is probably one of the most popular multimedia devices out there and Plex um, does have the live TV support for Plex Pass users but still um, they haven't been able to solve this problem. So Pe Plex would be in the position where they would have to pay the same royalty fee that LG and the other TV manufacturers who have ATSC3 tuner capability do. And that's one of the reasons why Silicon Dust just provided the tuner, but
but they didn't provide any software on their physical hardware device because they wanted to avoid this. And plus they felt like people that would use their device uh, would use it with an application. So it's possible that Plex would add a premium license above and beyond their Plex Pass to cover this particular issue, but that's not been something that has been announced yet. So however, if you remember when DVD encoding was reverse engineered by the open source community, this just might be a matter of time before they reverse engineer the AC4 codec for ATSC 3. So realize that both Plex and Jellyfin, Jellyfin's another uh, program people use uh, for over-the-air broadcast and also other media, both of them use FFmpeg and until FFmpeg has support for AC4 audio, it's likely that ATSC3 broadcast sound is going to be mute. If you tune to one of those channels right now and you use Plex or you use Jellyfin, you won't have any sound. Of course, if you go out and you follow my video I mentioned earlier, um, you'll be able to add sound to those particular channels. But that's kind of a hack. So what about digital rights management? And I think digital rights management is probably the bigger question here. So DRM is a part of the ATSC3 next-gen specification because they want to limit recording capabilities and not have a rerun of the VCR error where just anybody can record off the air copyrighted content. So over the air broadcast TV has always been free in the US. There's never been any charge to receive over the air broadcast. And before you start typing a comment that says, well, yeah, but if I receive it from my cable company, there's a charge. Well, that's because you're receiving it via your cable company. But you've always had the freedom to put an antenna in your attic or on the roof of your house or even a set of rabbit ears on your TV and receive over-the-air broadcast, and that's always been free. So the stations that have opted to encrypt their ATSC3 broadcast argue that for now, they provide free ATSC1 content and that the ATSC3 is just premium content and that's why they've decided to encrypt it. So originally the idea behind digital rights management on ATSC3 was to provide pay cable channels in areas without a cable TV infrastructure. So broadcasters derive the majority of their profits from license fees and not from advertising anymore. And so they want to also control uh, where those stations are broadcast to. So protecting syndication and selling broadcast streams seems to be the profit model, meaning that DRM will play an increasing role to protect content and that's including for over-the-air broadcast. At least that's my opinion. So in summary, it's hard to say if ATSC3 will have a future if royalties are demanded for the codex and DRM becomes prevalent for the content. Streaming is becoming more common than over-the-air broadcast. And content providers are making more money through licensing fees than through advertising. And the FCC is pushing back the 2027 deadline for ATSC1 going away for the ATSC3 issues I've mentioned in this video to be solved. So there are an increasing number of petitions to the FCC to legislate a solution to these problems, and particularly the DRM problem. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like the video, and don't forget to hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.